let's talk water. Some experts call it the new oil, a scarce commodity that future world wars may be fought over. In this country, the battle over water is forcing some communities to make tough choices with real financial effects. And there's no industry with a bigger target on its back than agriculture, a sector that accounts for a whopping 80% of the nation's water use, over 90% in some western states. Now, real money traveled to Colorado where there's an old saying that whiskey's for drinking and water's for fighting. We found farmers fighting for their financial lives and facing a triple threat of terrible drought, rich energy companies, and thirsty cities. And before we break, before the break, I promise to define the term acre foot. It's a phrase you'll hear in the story. Think of it this way. Two acre feet are the amount of water in an Olympic swimming pool. David Schuster has the story. As you can see out here, this is what ground that does not have water looks like. Uh, barren, dry, uh, the weeds don't even hardly grow here right now. It's so dry. In a normal year, Rocky Ford farmer Paul Casper's fields are filled with the cantaloupes the region is famous for. But with only an inch and a half of rain the last few years, he's seen his gross income cut by two-thirds. Roughly 75% of what we farm looks like this. We just do the best we can with what we have. We have a lot of people that count on us every year. Like other farmers in Colorado, Casper is no stranger to dealing with drought. In the last year alone, the agricultural sector took a hit of more than $700 million in lost economic activity. But pressures from growing cities, oil and gas interests, and an overburdened water system mean an existential threat to their long-term survival. Colorado's always either going into a drought or coming out of a drought. That's the way it works here. But we've reached the limits of this supply. We're splitting the pie up, and that's about money. Reagan Wascom, director of the Colorado Water Institute at Colorado State University, says the state's rapid population growth is the biggest menace facing farmers today. We're going to put another four to five million people here by 2050, all of them needing water and none of them calling ahead to see if there's water before they show up here. Quality of life has helped make Colorado's population growth twice the national average. Much of that is in the Denver area, but experts say urban sprawl means less water for agriculture which uses 85% of the state's supply. One study warns that the Colorado River will face a shortage of a billion gallons of water as the population doubles. What's changed is we're a very urbanized state, and so people's values have changed around where they want to see water. We want to see our rivers flowing free and, and vibrant, and um, that means we need more water. Where is it going to come from? Probably agriculture. Thirsty cities are pursuing a buy and dry strategy, buying farmers water rights and drying up agricultural lands to quench a booming demand. At least 400,000 acres, about 12 and a half percent of the state's irrigated farmland, dried up in the last decade alone. It's sad, there's several acres, thousands of acres in Rocky Ford that has been dried up. And it, you see all these productive acres of farm ground and, and it's gone. The water's in the cities and when the wind blows, it's dust everywhere, and we're, we're, we're going to be in a pretty bad situation. Michael Hirakata farms 900 acres in Rocky Ford and processes fruit for area farmers. We're trying to get our voice out there to say, hey, help us out, help us with our water situation, and, and think of uh, where your food comes from, because you know we are local farmers, and agriculture is the backbone of the United States. We're not hiring as many people. You know, we're not spending as much money, say, at the, at the parts stores and the implement stores. So it, this is having a huge trickle-down effect on what is going on in our local economy. It's an argument familiar to John Stolp, special policy advisor on water to Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper. We've seen the consequences of communities where the, the water has been transferred from the farms and we ended up with a kind of an economic and an environmental uh, disaster. And so for Colorado to be great economically, it's important that those rural communities also do well. But a new heavyweight contender, fracking, has joined the already crowded water fight in Colorado. As resources dry up, deep-pocketed oil and gas interests have driven the cost of water far beyond the reach of the average farmer. When they can pay 10 times more than I can, that makes my competition pretty stiff. No area has seen more activity than Weld County, home to Kent Pepler's farm and 19,000 of the state's 45,000 active wells. With a potential payoff of 2 billion barrels of oil and 23 trillion cubic feet of natural gas on the line, Texas energy giants Anadarko Petroleum, EOG Resources, and Noble Energy 
have invested billions. Farmers, if they want to lease water on the open market, they may pay $30, $40, $50 an acre foot. Cities are willing to pay, put another zero on that, oil and gas, two more zeros. And so uh, the problem is long term, farmers may not be, a, be able to afford to stay in this market and water is going to exit out of the agriculture. There's many misconceptions around hydraulic fracturing and oil and gas operations in Colorado. Doug Flanders of industry group Colorado Oil and Gas Association says many people exaggerate fracking's impact on state water resources. The oil and gas operations in Colorado use one-tenth of one percent of all the water used in Colorado. He says the industry has created tens of thousands of jobs and generated $1.6 billion in tax and other revenue for the state last year. Big numbers agriculture cannot hope to match. Facing a dry future, farmer Ken Pepler fears more will be lost than just the economic bottom line. Rural America supplies something socially. Most people don't give it enough credit for. We are the morality, we're the work ethic that's really made this country great. That's why agriculture is so important. David Schuster, Al Jazeera. While it's true the fracking industry isn't using a whole lot of water today, it is clear that the industry's presence in the water market is driving prices higher. Now that story is just the first of many that real money will bring you about water in America. I'd like real money to be your water source, so to speak, bringing you stories that explain how this precious commodity is creating both financial pain and gain for individuals, communities, and industries. We want to hear what you think about the competition for water by farmers, cities, and energy companies. Tweet me at Ali Velshi and at AJ Real Money, or use the hashtag water.